Hello everybody and welcome back to the Picnic Bench series. In today's video, we're going to get the top glue together. Let's get going. So here it is all laid out. It's bloody massive. And in the last video, I said I was going to try using the mitre saw to cut the tenons on the end, which we're going to stick to today. If it doesn't work, however, we'll just go to the bandsaw instead. So to start with, we need a marking gauge, which isn't in here. Found it. And I need to scratch a 49 millimeter tenon around the edge of this. The reason I'm doing 49 is because I cut the mortises to 50 mil. And if I set this to exactly 50 mil and there was a tiny little bump in the bottom of this, then it would prevent it from bottoming out and I'd have to skim off the end of the tenon. Whereas I might as well just make it that one mil shorter and then we should prevent that problem from arising. So for this, I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be able to get the shoulders accurate because I'm just gonna set a stop up on this side to butt the material against and then cut both sides. But I'm gonna be using the grooving function for this to prevent it cutting too deep. The thing I'm worried about is the sort of sponginess in that stop. It's all done on this little bit here and there just seems to be a little bit of give in it or something like that. In fact, I could pack out underneath that to prevent it springing down and that will certainly help. Just get some veneer under it and really make it tight. I reckon we could get three in there. Oh, that's better. So I'm gonna start by just taking a few tiny trims off the end on both sides to create a little, you know, just a short tenon. And then I'll check the thickness of that in the mortise. And once we've got that uh, up and down offset sorted with the head, that's where I'll start creating the stop to cut the shoulders 49 millimeters back. Okay, yeah, I guess I could have seen that coming. The, uh, the head isn't able to go back far enough when it's on the rebating function. So, um, yeah. And so if I wanted to chop that bit out, I would have to come from the other side, but then that would mean whatever stop I have here would then have to be moved for each side. And that just negates the need of a stop. Right, so instead what I've done is I've put a spacer block behind it, which will allow me to cut the entire width of this in one hit. And I have put the stop there ready to go so now the laser lines up with the marking gauge line and i should be able to just flip this over uh, oops should be able to flip this over like that still use that exact same stop without having to go from the other side now so let's do those test cuts first and then see if we can get the shoulder lines locked in Right, so there's the result. And you can see there's a few steps in it, but I'm pretty confident that's not actually down to the stop now because I've definitely got rid of all the sponginess in it. That's just the fact that I've got a, uh, what's it? An alternate top bevel blade on here. So basically it's just two pointy knives cutting into the edge of this and it's not flat in the middle. So it's always gonna leave some sort of step. But I'm looking at this mitre saw technique now and just thinking, how long did it take me to do literally a centimeter on the end of that? Whereas a bandsaw would just rip that straight off. This is why I love bandsaws so much. They just do it. Um, but I think there's still potential for using this setup to cut the shoulder lines because I don't want to be chiseling them out. I'd rather just get them straight off the saw and be done with it. And that's going to be quite difficult to achieve on the bandsaw. So I'm thinking, because I've managed to get that depth stop quite decent now, it's becoming quite a good fit in the mortise. I reckon I'm just going to skim off both sides of the tenon on here and pre-cut that shoulder and then we'll just rip the cheeks off on the bandsaw and kind of use a hybrid between the two machines. All right, so now I've got to cut the tenons to their width. So I'm gonna line that up with the mortise. And then I've got this line here on the mortise, which shows where the 
uh, I think it's the tangent, maybe, of the, uh, the curvy bit. <laughs> I don't know by this point. Basically, that's the widest point before it starts going into this curve. And so that is where I want the tenon to end. I'm actually just gonna do it a little bit beyond that because I want to give this component room to expand and contract. Then I can simply realign the fence with that mark and then chop all of these back to the shoulder lines. Right, and then the next cut is gonna be removing these little areas. And again, I'm gonna set up the fence to do that because I don't wanna be faffing around trying to chisel those. I'm gonna try and get it straight off the bandsaw. Right, and now it's just gonna be a case of shoulder planing them to fit the mortises. I was adjusting the fence throughout while cutting them on the bandsaw, just because they're a little bit tight up this end, and then I got them a little bit too loose, and then I got them bang on as I was working along here. So I think these ones are gonna take a bit more work. Those ones, those ones should be pretty damn good, hopefully. Mm. Right, so I've got it together. It's looking very big still. Um, I'm hoping I've got the overhang correct with regards to the top and the seat placement. It looks all right on SketchUp, but now I look at it, I don't know. Rob, do you want to test it out? Yeah, I'm all for it. Saucy. I'm in. Nice. So, where are we testing it? Okay, so that gap in the center should be able to line up with the gap on there. Yeah. Actually, there's quite a lot of seat overhanging that. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so. Is it really tall? Like, it's, I, it's, I don't think it's tall. Yeah. I mean, well it is, but like. Like, without sounding too grotesque, bear in mind at the moment, our bum cheeks are kind of wrapping over the things that we're sat on. And so that's kind of lowering us. If that yeah. was solid, we'd probably be here. Yeah. And then if we had an actual seat to sit on on top of that, we'd be here. Oh, my legs. That's not bad then, is it? Yeah. That's all right. I'm, I'm liking the size of it. it. It's actually quite good, isn't it? This is awesome. It's one of those things, it looks massive when it's in the workshop, but yeah. when we take it outside, it will be in proportion. So we've hit a few roadblocks that need to be addressed before we move to the next stage. Um, firstly, <laughs> I don't have any clamps that can actually clamp these breadboards ends on. I've got 1.5s and this is about a 1.6 meter span. So I've got to go to Axminster to grab some new clamps. And then there is the issue with the racking of the bench. So it's this movement that we're hoping to stop. And what we're thinking is two thick supports going across like this with a nice little arc in them as well. And they're gonna be attached into this section with a sliding dovetail coming in from the top. So one there, one there. And then we were toying around with another one here as some sort of footrest or something like that, I don't really know. But I think we're actually gonna do it out here, but just below the seat. Sliding dovetail in there, maybe at a slight angle to match the angle of the leg. And then we'll put like nice arcs on that as well to kind of blend it in with the overall design. And we're thinking like, it would be good to have some sort of, what would it be, diagonal supports as well, because that would really cut down on the racking. But with such a wide dovetailed section going across like that, we shouldn't necessarily need them. If it does come to it, then of course we can start adding diagonal braces, but yeah, we'll try it out and then we can just domino them in after if it, if it needs it. So um, I'm off to the shop, catch you in a bit. Right, just got back from Axminster, got my two meter long clamps. Let's get glue in it. But before I do so, I know a few people will bring up the fact that I could have just drawboard this. I realized that upon leaving to go buy the clamps from Axminster. Um, 
yeah, you're absolutely right. I could have draw bought it. However, I don't have any durable dowel in the workshop that would uh, be okay for exterior applications. And I can't be bothered to turn one, to be honest. And it looks nice plain. So that's all my excuses I have for not doing it. Great suggestion though, thank you. And now we figure out how to get it apart. Je suis genius. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah! Oi. Yeah. Right, all disassembled. Let's mix up some epoxy. Epoxy. Oh, I didn't get any thickeners. God damn it. I knew I forgot something. Right, so that's all glued up and you know, there's some minor gaps in it, I will admit, but pretty happy with it, pretty happy with it. So the next stage is going to be sliding dovetails. Right, so I mentioned earlier about our worries with this rocking side to side and basically the whole assembly racking. And so we're thinking about putting two larger sections in here to kind of resist that racking and make them nice and deep. So we've got a lot of surface area here to keep it uh, upright. Now there's a few different joints you could use here. The first one that came to mind, I'd love to just plunge a domino into this, but that will hold it somewhat, but as soon as that racking action is introduced, that's gonna begin working those dominoes out over time before it just completely pops out and the entire table becomes flat packed. So we need something in here that's kind of a mechanical joint that actually holds itself in while also preventing that racking action. And so the thought that came to mind was a sliding dovetail. So when I went to Axminster, I got the biggest dovetail cutter I could find, and that should get through pretty much half the thickness of one leg and the stretcher across, and we'll basically make this entire sliding dovetail, I don't know, also about 100 millimeters wide. It's a pretty chunky one. There were some slightly taller dovetail cutters, but this one was the tallest one that had that extreme pitch on it as well. So we're gonna get maximum locking action from this. So sliding dovetails. When cutting these with a router bit, you can't do this in successive passes. Basically, when you cut this dovetail channel, you need to do it at the full depth, like as is. There's no working down in increments or anything because then you just get rid of the taper. So what we need to do is clear out the waste first with a straight bit and then plunge this to full depth and then go all the way along. Now I've been messing around with ways to do this. I thought about pillaging the guide bush jig that I'm using in the cabinet project at the moment, which is part of the free online woodworking school. There'll be a link in the description for that. But I thought about using that 30 mil guide bush in there and then that will so if I just get that lined up, that will allow me to use a straight bit and then follow up with this afterwards. I could even make use of the stop up here if I really wanted. Trouble with that is I would have to do that for each individual joint. I'd have to do the straight groove, take it out without removing this, put in the dovetail cutter, reset the depth, go all the way along there, take it all out, put the straight bit back in, get this lined up straight, dovetail, and it would just be repetitive and more importantly, inaccurate. If I was to constantly move this around, change the cutter, change the depth all the time, I need to keep it all locked in. But what I've noticed is, if I run this flat edge parallel up against the inside flat edge of the picnic bench itself, that puts the cutter pretty nicely in the center of this component. So I could actually make some sort of block in here to act as a fence to push it along and then do that the same on the other side, same on the other part of the picnic bench, swap it round to the dovetail cutter and do exactly the same. I'll just have to create some sort of stop here so that I don't 
keep going. This will mean in certain instances, the cutter or the whole router will be wanting to track away from the line. That's just because of the way the cutter spins. Sometimes it's pulling the router into the fence. Sometimes it's pulling it out. So in fact, it will be this side when it's spinning that way, it's gonna be wanting to push the router that way. So when I'm doing the left-hand side, I've just got to be aware that I've got to put extra pressure this side to keep it locked into the fence. This side shouldn't be too bad in theory because the router should be pushing it into the fence unless I've got to do it that way. Is that gonna change anything? I don't know, I'll figure this out, but basically keeping it secured into the fence is the game here. So what I'm thinking is block like this, slots over that and then just bottoms out in there. It's a little bit tighter down here than it is up here. You see I've got just a tiny bit of wobble at the top, which will throw off that sliding dovetail if I'm looking for that really precise fit. So I've got to make sure that that's locked down. So I'm going to get that central within the wobble, which is about there. And then I'm going to clamp that down here to the bench. And then we're going to clamp the actual picnic bench down itself as well to ensure that doesn't skew. And then we've got a fixed fence here. This end is pinched in between the bench and then the bench is fixed at either end. So nothing should move from there. So the overall depth of this dovetail cutter is 22 millimeters. I'm going to take this one to 21 millimeters and do that in yeah, probably two or three increments to ensure we don't get too much burning or anything. I have added this as well, just a loose bit of material that acts as a stop because apparently in this project I'm enjoying over routing uh, due to loss of concentration. So I've got that to physically stop me going any further and that will just move to whatever side to ensure I don't make any mistakes. Where's the stupid block? No, you don't need that. You've just moved it. I haven't. No, I know. No, you, you've just done something. No, it's not me. I put the stupid block there. What stupid block? You've been going without the whole time. No, where'd you put the bloody stupid block? You don't need it. You're better than that. No, I'm not. Right, there you go. So we're gonna call it there for today. Very decent progress made. Tenons cut on the entire top. Top assembled with breadboard ends. Then we got the sliding dovetails cut ready for the cross support things. And we're gonna be doing a few extra sliding dovetails in the next episode as well as fitting the male components as well. Hopefully getting this thing dry assembled so we can see actually how rigid it is. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one.